We pick up from the end of the last lesson. Watch that video first if you haven't seen it yet. This lesson will explain the basic concept of what a limiting reagent is. We have the balanced equation from the last lesson. Let's say your friend Chris comes to you with 33 units of aggregate 1 and 28 units of aggregate 2. Chris wants to know how many units of molecule 3 can she actually make. In this lesson, instead of calling the molecules by numbers, we will use their names. Ba2 for molecule 1, C3 for molecule 2, B for molecule 3, and Ca for molecule 4. Based on the stoichiometry and the balanced equation, every time 3 units of Ba2 is taken apart, you need 2 units of C3 to go with them. So the easiest way to answer Chris's question is to group every 3 units of Ba2 with 2 units of C3s, and you can go on with this until one of the two molecules runs out first. So you see that Ba2 runs out first, and in the language of stoichiometry, this is called the limiting reagent, while the other with leftovers is in excess. A faster way to do the same thing is to divide the number of each aggregate by stoichiometric coefficient. 33 units of Ba2 divided into sets of 3s give 11 sets, and 28 units of C3 divided into sets of 2s gives 14 sets. So by this we see that Ba2 will be exhausted before C3. We can visualize this information better by putting the number of each molecule under the balanced equation. And we divide each one by a stoichiometric coefficient. So Ba2 is limiting. The limiting reagent will control the amount of products formed. It does not matter how much we have of the others that are in excess. Finally, back to Chris's question of how many CAs will she actually make. Since we have already divided BA2s into sets of 3s, we know that there are 11 sets. According to the balanced equation, every set of 3 BA2 aggregates should produce a set of 6 CA aggregates. So 11 sets of BA2 should make 66 CAs. In our table, this comes out easily if we just multiply 11 by the stoichiometric coefficient of Ca. We can do this for the other product, B, and we should get 11 multiplied by 3, which is 33 B aggregates as the other product. The number of C3 aggregates that's actually used is 11 multiplied by a stoichiometric coefficient of 2, which gives 22, so 6 C3s are left over. This is exactly the same procedure we would have used for a real chemical reaction, and the video solutions show many examples of this. Finally, we'll quickly discuss the concept of a mole. Let's say instead of coming with 33 units of Ba2 and 28 units of C3, Chris has 33 dozens of Ba2 and 28 dozens of C3. How would your answer have changed? Actually, not much. If you replace the word unit in your answer by the word dozen, everything else would be the same. So you can calculate stoichiometry with pieces or, or dozens or any other counting unit exactly the same way. Just like a dozen equals 12 as a counting unit, a mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. The mole is just another counting unit. So if Chris has 33 moles of Ba2 and 28 moles of C3, which would be a lot of Legos to carry, how would your answer have changed? Not much. Just change dozen to mole, and everything else stays the same. Finally, what if the number of moles are not whole numbers, like 0 0.033 moles of Ba2 and 0 0.028 moles of C3? The procedure would have been exactly the same. To make this absolutely clear, we will write out the numbers in a new table. First, divide the number of moles of each reactant by a stoichiometric coefficient. Whichever is smallest is the limiting reagent. So 
So BA2 is limiting. To compute how many moles of CA is produced, multiply the quotient for the limiting reagent by the stoichiometric coefficient of CA. So 0 0.066 moles of CA should be produced. 